everybody, it's BC here. Welcome to another episode of Planet Nomads. Uh, I apologize for the lack of videos lately. I have been, as you know, busy with a big project. Or I was busy with a bit of a challenge, which ended up leading to a bit of a big project that was sort of a, a bit of a request from the developers. And as, as you can tell from the thumbnail, yeah, I have my zoom set out wrong. I have built a massive... AT, AT Walker. Four legged. That uh, was sort of a request. But I decided to get a little bit of a touch here. Put the, the new Crane Balls logo on the side here just for, you know, bragging rights sort of deal. Kissing ass, however you want to say it. Uh, this beast is currently 440 tons. Uh, I have used cabinets, which are actually surprisingly pretty light for the size of them. And try to get a little bit of decoration in there. This has been a challenge to overcome, trying to get this thing to walk. Yes, it does walk. It's extremely slow. It gets about, I think I had it about going about three and a half kilometers an hour, which I know isn't much, but for trying to get basically a boat, an airplane warehouse walking, it's a bit of a challenge. Um, you can see I had to get a little bit of air support on this one. And I'll go inside here, show you the wiring. Uh, the build vision is kind of nasty. Um, it's about 7,000 parts, I think it is. Somewhere around there. But we go in here and I had to get about 10 air blades in here just to help carry the weight. I'm bringing uh, build vision, I turned the items off because each one of these is a cabinet. Each one of these has storage. Uh, fortunately, because they're not connected, it doesn't seem to be causing too much lag, but there is definitely some lag in here. Uh, center of mass is turned off in this seat for some reason. I have no idea. All right, but there it is, 283. 283 tons, that's for the main body, and then each leg is about 40 a piece. Now, believe it or not, it does actually move, and that's the surprising thing. So I'm going to turn that laggy business off. And uh, I am going to be posting this in the workshop as soon as I finish uploading the video. Uh, I'm going to show you guys how to set it up here. It's it's not too difficult. Uh, you don't need to worry about any of these switchboards at all except for one at each end. We'll get to that right now, actually. Go in here. Uh, this should be unlocked. Uh, I'm going to have to re-blueprint this. Uh, this is the, the timing device. You can adjust this if you want. But because the legs move so slow, I have to have it set to a 4 to 3 ratio. Uh, it turns clockwise, so if I have 4 pads going this way and 3 pads going the other way, it gives it a good enough time to get a proper stroke on the legs. And I think, hang on a second here, the bottom is 3 to 1. So if you have all 4 on the top, the bottom is 3 to 1, which gets an okay speed. So 3, that's 4. four and a three in the back so it is set up right now uh, again for the air blades uh, this isn't enough to actually lift the thing off the ground which is what I was trying to mainly aim for uh, but yeah we got to get to this first actually we got to hook up this thing because the blueprints don't save connected connections that are out of range so you just go and it's pretty simple to figure out which one to do and just do this we'll go around and around and around and then we've got to turn that off. Like so, to lock it. Good, that's still out of range. So then as you can see, each switchboard is connected to each end. Uh, doesn't really need to be this way, but I got it set up this way. You take, um, so for instance, the red one is out of range on this side, so you connect it over here to whatever side isn't actually connected. So in this case, it's a green that's connected, so we just connect it to the red. You go to the other side. I have a second set of switchboards in the back there that was uh, a later addition. I was working with multiple, multiple, multiple timing setups to get this working right. And you can see it wasn't a great. So again, on this side, it's this side that's connected. So we connect to this one. And that's all we got to do. From here on in, don't worry about any other switchboards around. The only thing you need to worry about is the black one here is for the air blades. Those are connected directly to the power and the feet. And this one here is the main power. Uh, I suggest before you actually unlock everything, you just go to the 
go into uh, the old command console here and that's I find it kind of funny there's actually a door sound to that thing even though it's just a freestanding thing and you just hover it up you just hold the space and it's hard for as long as you can it's not gonna lift it off the ground no chance let me get out of here and then we gotta go unlock the four hin eight hinges see if I get out of here I got door in the front door in the back which is just a hole in the the wall, which is nothing new with me. Now these ones are a little hidden, so we go unlock that. Uh, go unlock that. You gotta make sure you're actually getting the hinge to it, not the hover pad. Uh, you can use a terminal, but I would not recommend it. I was originally using the terminal to set all these hover pads to, to hover mode. There's over six. There's probably around 600 hover pads on this thing alone. And then all the containers are going to show up in the, the terminal, so it is a very long list and it's going to be extremely laggy. So let me just go ahead and do that. That, and I gotta admit, these hinges did a wonderful job holding up. If I had used uh, rotating plates, it probably would have broken out. And that is it. And it's not toppling over because I got the, the air support, I'm going to call it. All right, let's go in. Let's fire it up. All we got to do now is just turn on the yellow switchboard at the front, or on the front side of the spinner, and we are good to go. There we go. We are off. That's kind of weird that the air blade, air blade sounds come up after I turn that on. And we are walking. Are we? No, not. Did I lock this? I think I locked it. Yes, I did. That's right, because it was spinning too fast. Yes, it's been a long day for me. It's been a long day, but... I have a 400 ton walking machine. Just unbelievable. I wish it could have been a little bit faster, but I understand the game is trying to do a lot. Like, if I look this way, the frame rate's fine. I look up here, and it goes to shit. But I blame the lockers, the cabinets, because you got that textured door in the front. But the fact of the matter is, it's walking. It, it doesn't do the greatest on the hills. I did do some modifications for my original design. One of them happened to be having the hover pad space forward like this. And that's just to prevent it from going toe into the ground. If it goes toe in, at least these are going to push up and sort of push out a little bit. But there we go. This is two weeks of, probably three weeks of experimentation and testing and building and rebuilding and redesigning and everything. But it is working. Uh, the biggest drawback with this, for one, is it's almost as big as the draw rate of the animation range which means I have to stay close to it when it's walking or it doesn't walk and two because it's so heavy in the way I have the hinges set up it wants to naturally draw it backwards which sort of holds it back and I've been trying to I've tried messing around with keeping these pads in the back here always on to keep that tension there but it hasn't really worked out too well because it wasn't getting the proper lift to get the forward step. But persistence pays off. You keep coming up with different ideas and eventually you find something that works. I really didn't want to go with railings on this because you wouldn't get the actual like boxy detail. I know it's nothing like the original. But you know what though, it's Planet Nomads. It's not supposed to be like the original. It's supposed to be something that is outside the box. In this case, that box is 400 tons and happens to be walking. But I'm going to leave this one here. Uh, I want to get this up. It's actually extremely late for me. I'm working one shift this week. so. Uh, but anyways, I thank you everybody so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this one. If you did, don't forget to get me a, leave me a big thumbs up. Uh, and 
yeah, leave me a comment uh, and check it out in the Steam Workshop for yourself. And happy no Later.